welcome to the Strange Acts of God. Thank you for tuning in. I am your host, Nalong Urechuku, coming to you from Streams of Joy International, the home of the supernatural and the home of NSPPD, which, by the way, is an interdenominational global prayer platform comprising of hundreds of thousands of radical believers joined in faith and under a strong conviction that what God cannot do does not exist. It is not just a mantra, it's not just some trendy, catchy phrase, but it is in fact our revelation of God, it is our persuasion, and it is a warm mantle as we daily encounter God turning every worry into a wonder on NSPPD. I mean, only this week we saw prostate cancer healings. We saw Parkinson disease healings. We saw breast cancer healings. We saw death cancellations to the tune of 20 million, 35 million, just to mention a few. And on today's show, we have three mind-blowing medical wonders lined up for you on the show today. But right before we get into that, could you just take a second and click on the share button if you are yet to. In Streams of Joy, we believe that one man's testimony is another man's prophecy. And many a times we see God replicate on NSPPD. We've seen God replicate these testimonies in the lives of Men like you and I that just watch and key into these testimonies and God replicates these same things in their lives. So we must be deliberate to go public with this. Click on the share button if you are yet to invite a friend, tap someone. They need to come watch this show today. Amazing, phenomenal lineup of testimonies. And we have re-invited friend to the show, consultant, family physician, Dr. Kelechi Onyeri is back with us on The Strange Act of God, and he's going to put us through these testimonies we heard in the course of the week. Dr. Kelechi, we have missed you on The Strange Act of God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's always a pleasure being here. So good to have Thanks you back with me. us. So Thank good you. to have you back with Thank us. You have so you been following an SVP? Oh, yes. And the testimonies are just mind-blowing. Just yes. like you said, mm. it's amazing. These are out of the world testimonies, yes. things that ordinarily, you know, you know, like the, a man came out and said, these are things that should be reported on, on CNN. CNN. I heard that. CNN should be carrying mm, these things mm, because mm. these are the kind of, mess kind of, kind of test uh, messages mm. that the world needs to hear the at this world point needs in time. To hear it. Yes. Mm. So we should, I think we should talk to CNN. <laughs> <laughs> we need to, we need to, yes. we will. Um, you know, we have three phenomenal testimonies Amazing. today, and our first testifier mm. is a nurse. All the way from Sierra Leone, her name is Mrs. Patricia Siakombe, and she took some of this firepower to her workplace. Watch what happens. Wow. Do does not exist. I am Patricia Siakombe calling from Freetown, Sierra Leone. I joined this platform sometimes last year. It was on the 24th of February. That was on Thursday when I went to the hospital to work, when I had this patient screaming inside her room, crying of labor pain. So I had to rush inside this room and she told me she's having the urge to push the baby. Then I told her, okay, let me go and check on your chat. So I had to, because I was not there when they admitted her. So I had to go through the chat. I noticed it was a twin pregnancy and one of the baby was not lying properly. The baby was lying transversely. And for transverse lie, either the doctor do maneuver or they take the patient to theater for cesarean session. So on my way going back to drop the chat, I had a shout again. When I entered, I saw the first baby coming out by waste which we call bridge, bridge presentation so i had to catch this baby and the delivery that first one was successful because the baby come out came out and was crying so i told her that this second baby it's not easy for you to give back to this baby so let's go to the labor world where all deliveries have been done and she had to got up we walked from our world to the labor world praise be to god when she lay down on the couch whilst i was calling the labor world sisters and nurses when i palpate i noticed that this second baby has torn 
instead of lying transversely the baby was lying straight but the head was up and the feet were presenting so i had to try to do some examination i noticed that there is membrane intact then i called the sister and i said please can we rupture this membrane because i was scared for the delay of the second baby they said no let's leave for the doctor to come as long as it is transverse line maybe the doctor will come and do some maneuvers or we take her to the theater i said ah uh -uh. i said okay so i hold the, the mother's hand i was praying with her i was praying when the doctor came the doctor ruptured the membrane and the baby was out but the, the doctor filled the pulse and the cord there was no sign of heartbeat there was no sign of pulse and the doctor told me our ah, sister this baby is gone i said no just give me you say what do you want to do to the baby i said what god cannot do does not exist just give me this baby so she said okay oh yeah take this baby now okay then i take the baby i took the baby from him so i was the mother was observing everything that was going on so i was resuscitating this baby praying resuscitating praying resuscitating praying then the doctor turned to me again he had to feel again the baby feel the pulse feel for heartbeat said, ah, sister this baby is gone i said just leave me now i know i have this god he will not fail me so i was resuscitating for over 30 minutes then the doctor said oh yeah the mother is bleeding eh please give me space i need some space i said okay i'm going outside with the baby out of the the room where the mother was i'm using another room then the mother as i was going she had to say sister i said yes he said my baby is in your hand please i said no 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 point of correction your baby is not in my hand she is in the hands of god he said okay after god is you i said okay no problem i said i know my god won't fail me then those nurse came they checked they just leave me i was there alone with one other student when i placed my hand on top of the chest of the baby i noticed the baby heart was beating then i called two of the nurses to confirm what i felt so they did and they shout ah, the baby's um, heart is beating i said yes but they said but still the baby is black because there was no sign of life because for a normal baby a baby is supposed to be pink but for this baby is totally black because there was no oxygen there was no sign of life i said yes i said but it will happen what god cannot do does not exist they said okay then the baby had to stay and um, started gaining the normal color it started from the feet the feet became pink right onto the neck it was now pink then the face now was still dark i was still praying resuscitating, the, resuscitating this baby i was there busy praying when one of the relatives came inside the ward and said, ah, what is going on? I said, well, your relative have given birth, but one of the baby has issues. So she also knelt down on her feet and prayed and ended up saying, what God cannot do? Then I answered, does not exist. So I had this courage. I said, ah, with the two of us, God will answer that prayer. So they finished writing the paper. They want to take the baby for my hand to take to the SVB. I said, no, I'm going with this baby myself. So I took the baby, went to the unit. But as soon as I laid the baby on the couch, I noticed the baby heart was beating and the baby was breathing. I had to shout again, what God cannot do does not exist. Then the nurses came, they said, hey, but the baby is breathing now. Why, we don't need, I said, yes, we don't need armor bag again. Just connect the oxygen if you are supposed to open IV line. Just do it, please. Do anything you have to do. I want this baby. They said, okay, so they had to try all their best. And praise God, this baby is alive and doing well. So I want to thank God. I want to thank everybody for giving your time on this prayer altar. Thank you very much, Pastor Jerry. May God reach you, bless you, and may God answer our prayer. What God cannot do does not exist. Oh my goodness. <laughs>
This is, this is mercy. Mercy yes. at work. Mercy at work. Mercy at work. Mercy at work. Oh, my work. goodness. Oh, phenomenal testimony. Oh. God is good. You know, we're so accustomed to hearing a baby cry just after mm -hmm. birth. So I'm wondering, doctors, what indicators, what parameters do you look for after a baby's birth? You know, I like when you say we are so accustomed. Yes, we are accustomed to. Like it's to. one of those things. Yes, like, you know, <laughs> a baby is born, you just hear the cry of a baby. Like it's one of those things, mm. not knowing that God yes, is actually yes. at work in that process. Yes, when those things happen. You know? Yeah, mm. you know, for this particular one, this one, the, the baby came out, um, there are basic parameters that you look out for. Okay. And um, there are about five parameters, right. which we call the family, the ABGA, ABGA. The baby ABGA. And that's not a political party. No, not a, no. <laughs> <laughs> So the first one you have in the ABGA is the appearance of the baby. Appearance. You're looking at the color. Okay. Then you're looking at the pulse or the heart rate. Okay. Then you're now looking at the grimace or the reflexes. Okay. Then you're now looking at the activity of the baby hmm. and then the respiration. Wow. So these are the five parameters Those that you look for. And you parameters. score them zero to two for mm. each of them with a total of ten. Mm. So it's mm. measured at the first five minutes, subsequently under five minutes, mm. until you know it helps you to know whether resuscitation is needed. Especially it just gives you an idea of the baby that has been delivered. Wow. And in this case, the appearance, she said the baby was... Baby blue. was blue or dark, you know, and as the she pulse, said. There was, there was no, no pulse. pulse. The grimace, what's the grimace? That's the reflexes. Okay. What happens is that you probably put a... Um, during resuscitation, okay. and the baby is able to suck yes. upon the uh, whatever, the tube, mm -hmm. that shows that the baby has adequate reflexes. Mm. I'm sure this was this, this was, was not this the was case not at all. Yes. And then activity, and activity the baby was there was no activity. The baby was, the baby was motionless. Very motionless. And then what? And respiration. respiration. There, there was, was no respi heartbeat there was whatsoever. There was no respiration. So those five parameters, know, parameters were not there. And you said they are checked per five minutes. Per five minutes. And 30 minutes later, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. Let me not go ahead of myself. I'm so excited. <laughs> so what happens when these indicators or these parameters are not present? You know, these parameters, once they are not present, yes. of course, <laughs> you're looking at a baby that is lifeless. Mm. And the appearance is not, the, the, mm -hmm, the, the, mm -hmm. everything is zero. Everything is zero. Mm. You, you have to think twice whether you need to resuscitate or not. Mm, but mm. when you're able to like get at least, the um, ABGA is recorded between 7 to 10. Okay. When an ABGA of 7 to 10, that's very adequate. Mm. 4 to 6, mm. that means that it's uh, moderate as physio, birth asphyxia. Okay. But from 0 to 3, that's mm. very severe birth asphyxia. Mm. So we're having a child that has an um, ABGA of 0. Mm. That's severe. Birth asphyxia. Wow. So that's severe, that's what, severe birth, birth asphyxia. asphyxia. Exactly. Wow, wow, mm. wow. And 30 minutes later, the baby is still dark. Um, <laughs> there's still no motion. The baby no just pulse. Said at, after 30 minutes, mm -hmm. the baby is still abga of zero. Abga of zero. Because from what the testimony, what we have from the testimony, they kept on checking the baby. Even mm. the doctor had to come back a second time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and check the pulse and mm. notice that the pulse was not there mm. and the respiration was not there. Mm. And that was when he told her that, look, we'll stop all these things that you're doing. Mm. When we saw an aggressive NSPD. Aggressive An aggressive who believed totally mm. that what God cannot do does, does not, not exist. exist. And she believed mm. that I would keep resuscitating yes, this baby. Yes, I will keep res Ordinarily, resuscitating. Ordinarily, after 10 minutes, yes. after 10 minutes of resuscitation, mm. and you're still getting an abga of zero, mm. After 10 minutes, it's allowed to stop. Hmm. It is allowed to stop at that point in time. So the doctors and the midwives and the nurses that walked away were right in They were so. right. They were right. Because it should be so. an improvement. Hmm. At five minutes, there should be an improvement of the abga. It tells you the next step to take. Hmm. It tells you what next to do. Hmm. If you're getting an improvement in the abga, you don't know that, oh, possibly child might need to be ventilated, mm. you might need to take over respiration, you mm. might need other care plans to make sure that the baby survives. And the baby, what you're trying to avoid at this point is that you're trying to avoid, because the longer the baby stays without oxygen, mm. what happens is that it's oxygen deprivation, especially mm. to the brain. Wow. And this has been linked to babies having cerebral palsy. Yes, 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 yes. Wow, wow, wow. So 30 minutes later, 30 minutes no later, response. 30 minutes and in later. fact, the doctor asked her to excuse them from the room. He was totally right. The doctor, on that basic guideline, yes. having resuscitated up to 10 minutes and the abga was still 
as it was hmm. when the baby was born. Hmm. The doctor had every right, hmm. but we saw an aggressive, aggressive radical that didn't NSPPDN. want to take a no for an hmm. answer. Hmm. You know, there's something she's seen, there's something she has heard, and she knows she got, what God cannot do does not you know, exist. She, there, there's something she had contacted. Hmm. She had contacted. You know, when a uh, hmm. pastor is praying, hmm. the, 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 the vibrancy of the prayer, hmm. and you see a lot of NSPDNs, they connect to this vibrancy of the prayer, hmm. and so much so, that's hmm. why they're able hmm. to like, hmm. get the kind of testimonies that hmm. they get. And you know, um, you know, we've had a trend, we've had a sequence of nurses and midwives, even on the show, that have, you know, had similar encounters that, you know, maybe probably they received babies that were lifeless and, you know, they kept going, they kept praying and they kept declaring and God turned the narrative. So having seen and having heard these mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. you know, she was so convinced and she kept on going mm -hmm. at it. And... God sent another NSPPDN uh, to the hospital at that time. And, you know, the two of them just kept praying and exactly. declaring. You know, exactly. the Bible says one shall chase a thousand. And two shall chase ten thousand. Ten thousand. They will NSPD put ten thousands to flight. NSPDNs are actually fulfilling scriptures. Yes. That death is being swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah. And that's exactly what Hallelujah. we're seeing at every point in Hallelujah. time. Hallelujah. nothing is impossible. Mm, even nothing to the is point impossible. point where you have either a severe birth asphyxia or mm. even death. Or even death. Or even death. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I'm so excited. What God cannot do does, does not, not exist. exist. And the baby, after pink. a few minutes, did you see that begins baby? to graduate. Yes, I did. Did you see that baby? Pink baby. Pink baby. <laughs> and I don't know if you noticed, but I didn't notice that the baby was breathing with difficulty. I didn't notice it. Baby was breathing baby fine. Was breathing baby fine. was breathing mm. fine. Baby mm. was pink all yes, over. Pink you know? all over. Oh, I can't wait to Glory see this to baby at six months, one year, and thereafter. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Phenomenal, Phenomenal testimony. testimony. So exciting. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Our mm. second testifier is Mrs. Rose, testifying on behalf of her friend from London. You need to watch this. Indeed, what God cannot do does not exist. I'm Rose, testifying from London on behalf of a friend called Tina on 20th. 5th of November 2020, a friend of mine tested to me to pray for her because uh, she's uh, tested positive to COVID. Her case is dangerous because she's high risk, she's got attention that she's all kinds of ailments and it was dangerous. So I said I would take the matter to the altar of her. I did and sow the seed on behalf of her son because if anything happened to her, it's the son that will suffer. And we kept praying. I sent the link to the mom, the sister and friends that I knew. We kept praying. And then the next day, the son texted me that they are putting the mom in coma because even the oxygen at 100% is still not working. And they tried to wake her up after six weeks. And we started praying. We kept praying morning, lunch, midnight. I would send the midnight prayers to the mom and we would be praying and everything. And then um, whilst in coma, a message will come. Antibiotics are not working. The um, steroids are not working. The lungs are bleeding. Everything is shutting down. Uh, the trichoscopy to ease the fluid off her chest. So oxygen can go. It's not, it's not working. And I, I told her everything can fail. But my God of NSPPD will not fail. We kept praying and praying and praying. And then uh, it, was, it was out of hand. So um, on the... Um, 6th of January, it was early congratulations, uh, it's complete high favor prayers. In 17 minutes into the prayer, Pastor Jerry came and pronounced that today they are removing your loved one from the ICU. And um, they are removing the machine, there is no hope. If God is on this altar, before the appointed time, there will be a turn around. They said today, uh, they are removing your loved one uh, from the ICU and taking away the machines. Uh, La Palabra, they say today, uh, that there is no more hope. Uh, that there is no more hope. Uh, if God is on this altar, uh, before the appointed time, uh, before the appointed time, before the appointed time, let the appear turn around. Amen. I was on my way to the train station. I dropped everything and then Keith is my friend and I received this one. I said, Amen. And then I kept going. Then God was so powerful during the um, uh, offering declaration. Pastor Jay came again and said, I don't know why I'm declaring this. Um, anyone uh, whose loved one is in the ICU. The power of the God is entering the ICU. I see a miracle is coming out of ICU. It, it, it will confuse the medical expert in indeed. God is powerful. So um, then I said amen on the train. I didn't care. I was just seriously praying. And then I kept going. Then in the afternoon, a friend of mine texted, I see what happened at uh, Tina's bed today. I said what I called. She said, hey. The med doctors have called the family to go and say their advice because everything has shut down. 
and they were going to remove the machines today and when they went uh, miraculously tina has opened her hands in a question gesture like this why am i here so the medical experts were baffled they were uh, uh, indeed uh, co confused as pastor jerry declared and they called the family on zoom and the mom came and said tina your your friend rose her pastors all of us are praying for open your eyes open your within two minutes she opened her eyes all of a sudden the machines became stable it started working god of miracles and then the trichoscopy was able to they could it, it fixed they they fixed it and ease the fluid off her chest they put uh, oxygen on back and kick, 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 everything was working the people of god the the shocking thing is that i have no knowledge that the family has been called and they've said their advice and they've gone home lamenting preparing for funeral i have absolutely no idea and so when i heard the news i broke down i cried and i screamed what god cannot do does not exist oh my jesus and then oh <laughs> this is a miracle instant miracle and then it started working gradually the antibiotics tears and everything and i've got some pictures here to show you this is when she was in coma the night before the when she was gone the, the night before the morning that the message came that they were going to remove the distance that and, and the machines and this is when the trichosomy was done and that's the voice box they gave her because she couldn't speak and then this is her today at home jesus what god cannot do that means i came to return all the glory to the god of instant miracles there's instant miracles on out of fire oh god of heaven i thank you my pastor god will never finish blessing you your generation will receive all these blessings and the nsbp and the crew the pastors are blessed and i thank you i pray to god to give you the strength you need the strength i pray to god for the strength to do this job and also i thank god for my miracle god a word of knowledge came from my daughter last year and god delivered her from demonic migraine oh god i can't thank you enough i thank you and i bless you all what god cannot do does not exist oh god thank you so so much god bless you all amen oh, hallelujah <laughs> hey did you see that i saw did you see how fresh i'm she was telling looking? you oh nothing Not like what she went through at looking all. so healthy so at fresh <laughs> Oh, glory to God, glory wow. to God, glory to God. COVID, so, COVID. She had COVID. Co severe COVID, severe not COVID. just COVID. Mm, mm. So if you just say because COVID. Because she had underlying issues. She had diabetes and, you know, it just went downward from She there. had severe COVID, as mm. in to have gotten to that level, mm. as in she had severe COVID. Mm. That's what she had. You know, um, you know, the testifier said that she was put on life support. Mm -hmm. No, she was put into a, a medically, medically induced, induced coma. coma. So what is the essence of putting her, you know, in a medically induced coma? You know, in medically induced coma, what, we're, what you're doing here mm -hmm. is that um, you're shutting down the body. Okay. Just like you have maybe by an anesthetist. Maybe somebody is having surgery being done and then anesthetic drugs are given to the person mm. and then the anesthetist now takes over the functions of the person, like takes over the function of breathing, takes over the functions of um, what you call the air, air passages, um, every normal vital functions of the body is taken over by the doctor. Mm. In terms of when the person is under medical induced coma, in particular mm. drugs are usually used drugs, anesthetic drugs, mm. and then you just put the person in that state of coma for a particular period of time, mm. for a particular period of time mm. until whatever it is that you want to achieve has been attained. So would you say six weeks is a long time? Well, some people have stayed in medical induced coma for longer than that period of time. Mm. But in this particular case, what happened was that within that period of six weeks, mm. she was deteriorating. Yeah. So the essence of putting her in medical induced coma for this one was not being achieved. Yes. The steroids, the oxygen saturation, yes. the Almost all the things that were being measured was not working. Yes, I was going to come to that. Mm. So six weeks later, mm. you know, she's not responding to treatment. Um, they said, try, what's that thing she called? A trachostomy is a tube okay. that is put in the air passage, just yes. in the front of the neck. Okay. And then it bypasses the upper airways and then just connects the whatever, where the oxygen is coming from, mm -hmm. directly into the lungs. Mm. Okay, so, and they said she was also bleeding in her lungs. She was bleeding you know, in her lungs. And, you know, and then she was also having secretions in the lungs. Mm. Because the function of the airway 
is actually apart from ensuring that air passes and gets to the lungs, mm. it's also to make sure that the air the airway is clear mm. of mucous secretions. Wow. So in this particular situation, the tracheostomy tube was also being used hmm. to suck out those secretions hmm. because she was unable to do them. Mm. At it that seems point like in everything time. was shutting down. You know, last week we spoke about multiple organ dysfunction, mm -hmm. and this sounds a lot like that. We, 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 what we have here is yes. a situation whereby we have multiple organ failure. Oh, not even a dysfunction, everything, a everything, complete a failure. Complete failure. Hmm. Everything was just failing. Hmm. And that is why the doctors had to reason. You see, you have to look at it from this perspective. Yes. They, based on the resources available within that place, mm. the equipment or the whatever they need to be able to like keep the person going or alive for a period of time, mm. they were able to like see that this is what we need to do at this point in time. We're not yes. gaining. We're not gaining any. We're not gaining, We're not achieving anything mm. by keeping this person mm. under. She, this person was on ventilator. On ventilator. Yes. It was there was a tube for feeding mm. and. Almost every other function of the body had been taken over. Mm. So they felt that they were not taking, gaining much. And that, in that situation, they needed to take the person off. I would assume that, you know, there will be parameters that doctors would look for mm -hmm. before suggesting to a family that they want to pull their ward out of life support. What are those parameters? Those, this, the parameters are, were already there in this patient. They were already they there. They were already there in this patient. Everything Everything. Was... Number one parameter that, we, that stood out. You know what we're dealing with here with COVID? Yes. And one of the causes, problems of COVID is that it causes a severe respiratory distress. Yes. So I presume that this person was having a respiratory failure. Mm. They were using steroids. What steroids do is as much as possible. One, apart from other functions that it has in COVID, it also helps to help the lungs to keep the uh, um, um, airway patent. So, but in this particular case, the steroids had, were being given, it wasn't working. Mm. Oxygen was being given, mm. it wasn't working. Mm. And a lot of other things were also failing. Mm. She, I think he was, she, he was bleeding somewhere, mm. he was also bleeding too. Mm. So mm. that means that either he was having severe sepsis that was now causing that the platelets were so low and he was now bleeding abnormally. Mm. So, most so of those all parameters. treatment options had been explored had been and explored. exhausted. Exactly. And then God stepped in. Where science <laughs> failed, where skill, where expertise failed, God stepped in. The amazing part and of this testimony. Came. Exactly. The amazing part of this testimony was that, you know, we had come to a point where the doctor said, we have come to our wit's end. Mm. The word now came. Mm. And the word continued from there. Mm. But God's what the over. word did was everything was accelerated yeah this was within six weeks mm. from the time the if six weeks induced coma patient was going down mm. the word now came mm. patient now started accelerating going up you know i was coming to that talk to me about her recovery oh. i mean i'm looking at those pictures and i'm like <laughs> what talk to me about this recovery speedy you know, no. within days, I... which is out of the hospital and on her feet, you know, she was about to be taken off of life support. Now, look, we're not talking about one organ. Yes. We're not talking about two. Mm. We're talking about several organs Multiple that had organs failed. that had failed So, entirely. we're not just saying that everything mm. happened at the same time. Just, everything just happened at the same time. At the time. same time. Medically speaking. You'd have expected a progression. Yes. A progression. But this one that everything ah. just happened at the word, at the mm, instance of mm, the word of God. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm. Glory to God. Yes. You know, Jesus said, with men it is impossible, impossible. but not with God. And with God, all things. things are possible. And you know, one thing I find so amazing mm. with this last two, tes the two testimonies yes. that we have seen here. These are people that are completely independent of the families. Yes. This one was a friend. Mm. This one was a nurse. But mm. they believed. Mm. They believed. <laughs> they believed. They Glory believed. to God. Glory they just to took God. What they had gotten from NSPD, the fire altar, and they took it to where it was needed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Men said it was over, and God said, God no. said no. God said no. What God cannot do it in truly does, does not exist. It does not, does not exist. <laughs> Phenomenal. Our third and final final testimony for the day is from Streams of Joy Abuja. Watch what happens. I am that woman God showed mercy. 23rd of October on NSPPD. Papa declared we will not die. I will not be buried. The next day, which is on Tuesday, that was on a Monday. He now said you will not deliver a cerebral palsy baby. 
I hear the Lord say, rebuke cerebral palsy. Uh, rebuke cerebral palsy. Uh, cerebral palsy. Uh, hear the word of the Lord. Disappear right now. I did not understand. I just said amen. You know when you say amen, when you don't even know, the prayer was for you. That same day, I went for my antenatal checkup. I was pregnant for this baby. Seven months and two weeks as at that time. On getting to the hospital, I worked there also in the hospital. The nurse checked my BP and said, Sister, just sit down here. I did not understand. I just said, okay, let me sit down. Let me not argue with her. She was busy with the other pregnant women. I sat down. She came back again and checked my BP again. She said, let me tell you the truth. Your BP is too high. You cannot go home today. I said, what do you mean? Let me see the doctor. The doctor came in, checked my BP. My BP was around 1810. The doctor said, Madam, we will not leave you to go home today. I was asked to stay on bed rest. But that was the beginning of the journey. Two weeks down the line. It wasn't coming down. Three plus six protein. They were querying eclampsia. On the second week, they said on a Thursday, I remembered my consultant came and said, Madam, we are going to separate you and this baby. It's either you leave or the baby leaves. Or we'll just have to save you. So they were not even putting the baby on the picture. The most important is to save me so that I can leave. We entered the surgery. I kept shouting inside of me and I kept saying, what God cannot do does not exist. On that very day, we provided the blood, the surgery happened. By two o'clock, they took me to the theater. That was the last I remembered. Two days, I was not awake. That, until the second day, that was the day I woke up. The BP was still, they were still trying to resuscitate me. And when I was in that room, I don't even know where I was. All I could hear was Pastor Jerry's voice. Go back, wow. go back, wow. go back. Wow. That was all I could hear. And that was it till I woke up. Five days after, I didn't see this baby. I didn't even know how he was feeding. He was in the incubator because, of course, he was free time. That was the beginning of the testimony. This is just mine, how God saved me. Then we come to the baby. On getting there, I realized a whole lot was wrong. They kept saying they would change the blood of this baby. They did EBT. The doctors here will understand what I mean. They did exchange blood transfusion. They were querying jaundice. They were querying a lot of sepsis. His temperature was out of this world. Only for him to be transfused that day, after the EBT, 12 hours later, they did um, post-EBT um, blood work. They noticed that this baby's platelet was 10%. The normal is between 100 and above. This baby was on 10. And the implication medically is that he could bleed into his brain. Huh. In fact, on that very day, my husband went to see him in the incubator room. And he noticed that this baby was already bleeding from the skin. Mm. They asked us to buy platelets. We bought. People here, the medical workers here, understand what platelets is. Each of them, we buy at 256,000. And they kept transfusing this boy every single day. Every day for two weeks. I say, God, show me mercy. God, show me mercy. On that fateful day, November 23rd, on NSPPD, Pastor Jerry said there is a woman here. Your baby is in the incubator. I don't know who you are. But for you to know that God is here, one hour, you will hear good news. There is a mother of a newborn. I'm not sure the baby is up to five days. They put the baby in an incubator. You have your phone right in front of you. They took your baby and put it in the incubator. And they are saying they don't like the way the baby is doing. The news you heard this morning was very discouraging that the baby is not doing well at all. One hour after this prayer, one hour after this prayer, if you will not doubt, your baby, I'm not sure, is up to five days old. And they say the baby is not doing well at all. And you have been crying. The Lord saw your tears. The 
lost all your tears. Yeah. If there is fire on this altar, yeah. if you will not give back your testimony in another one hour, what looks like a hopeless situation, uh -huh. what looks like there's no way out, uh -huh. what looks like the end of the road, uh -huh. and the sound of your amen, uh -huh. I decree it is reversed right now. I've been crying inside that incubator. I could not touch this baby since I gave birth to him. They refused me carrying this baby. On that very Monday, 23rd of November, Pastor Jerry made that statement. Immediately, I had peace. I said, okay, let me wait. I finished the prayer, I went downstairs. Meanwhile, for this case, they invited the hematologist because they were querying cancer. They were querying a whole lot of things. But I told God nothing will happen to this baby. Not on my watch. I went down. I opened the door. The doctors, the hematologist saw me and said, Mom Yosuji, congratulations. I shook. I said, for what? He now said, your baby's platelet is 82,000. I said, doctor, 82,000. I said, okay, what God cannot do does not exist. Because what I do is every morning after prayers, I'll come down and pray for him. Because they won't allow me to play the, you know, the video there. If you had seen this baby before then, there was no hope. There was no, I mean, this baby was weighing 1.2 kg. One, at some point, it got to 0 0.9. What can you do with a baby like that? But God showed me mercy. From that day, he started changing. If I come, I will see my baby, he is changing. He started, a lot started happening that same week. The doctor called me that you're going home. You're carrying your baby home. That there is nothing wrong with this baby. In fact, he started terrorizing them. Because inside the incubator, he will use his two legs and open the door. I said, people should give me my baby, let me go home. He doesn't want to stay here again. And that was how we were discharged. I've come because one of those days I told God, if you save me and save this child, the first day I step my foot into this church, I will bring him to say thank you, Jesus. Because he can only be God. No man could do it. One of the doctors, God bless you, Dr. Uno, wherever you are. She's also a colleague of mine because I'm also a medical practitioner. She told me, Sophia, this is nothing but it's only God that can do it. It's only miracle that can save this baby. No man can do it. And to God be the glory. From that day to today, this boy has not been to the hospital. Nothing is wrong with him. They went and did all the tests again before they allowed us to go. The blood they saw in his brain, they didn't see again. There was no bleeding in the brain. There was no infection again. There was nothing. In fact, nothing is wrong with this baby. I've come to return all the glory back to God. For saving me and my baby. For making me alive in the land of the living. Yeah. To God alone be all the glory. To the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. <laughs> To ah, God be the glory. Ah, you know, oh. I'm always so excited. <laughs> Whenever I hear medical doctors give medical testimonies, I'm so excited because I know that it is a strange act of God. For a doctor to be mm. testifying, it must be a strange act of God. These are the kind of testimonies mm. you hear. You just want to break out in song. Ha! <laughs> you just want to break out in song. <laughs> exciting, I'm exciting, telling you. exciting. You know, it is. This, is, this, is, this is such a mind-blowing It is. Such it a mind-blowing testimony. <laughs> from the beginning, from the beginning to the end. Right from the beginning. And what's unique about her testimony is that the word went before there was an before, issue. Before. Before there was an before issue. Before there was an issue. The word had gone and was waiting, waiting for, for her. her. That's how you know that the devil has failed ab initio. Before the beginning, the devil had failed from exactly. the onset. Exactly. Because the word was there waiting for her. Meaning that the devil has also so planned. Mm. But the word went mm. ahead. Ahead of the devil. Ah, glory to God. Ah. <laughs> glory to God. Glory to God. So she had a baby preterm. Seven yes. months Seven and months. two weeks. Weeks, seven months and, and two, two weeks. weeks. You know, they admitted her, her BP was high, and two weeks later, she had to have an emergency CS, exactly. and they took out the baby. She had, she had severe eclampsia. Oh. Severe eclampsia, so oh. she needed to, that baby needed to be evacuated as fast as possible. Okay, I want to know, because, you know, she kept talking about platelets. Mm -hmm. What is the function of the platelets? Well, the platelets is function, functions principally is to, blood, to clot, for blood clotting. 
okay. primarily for blood clotting. Mm. So when the platelets are not there or they are low, you the person bleeds all over. Bleeds all over. All over. Physically or internally? Both internally, both physically. Like wow. if, you have a, if you have an injury on your hand right now, mm. what happens is that you have a platelet plug that comes and blocks the bleeding from continuing. Yes. So if the platelets so the are not there, is that if it's not there. The person keeps on bleeding. You continue to you bleed. You continue to bleed. And these platelets can be bought? It can be bought. The platelet actually has a level, just like she said. Yes. Yes, yeah, so you have a level about 150 times 10 raised to the power 9 to about 450. Okay. So in this case, whenever the platelets, as the platelets are reducing yes. up to a particular number, up to a particular number from less than 50, when you have surgical incisions or trauma sites, mm. a person can bleed. But from 20 and below, 20 million and below, a person can bleed spontaneously. And we saw it in this case. Hmm. So she had about 10. 10 wow. 10 to power 9. Wow. So wow. at that point wow. in time, we're having that the baby had already started bleeding into the skin. And towards the end of the testimony, she said that the baby was also bleeding into the brain. Hmm. So the complications of that blue platelet was also there. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hmm. And she talked about platelets being bought oh, yes. and transplanted. How, tell me how that works. It's very expensive. Platelets hmm. are very, you know, they're not common conditions that you get to see every time. Hmm. So you have to have, you have the uh, pooled platelets and then you have the platelet concentrates. Hmm. So what happens is that, of course, these platelets are, is a composition of the blood. Mm. Just like you have the white blood cells, you have the red blood cells, you, have, you also have the platelets. Mm. So you are extracting only that particular component of the blood, mm. which is what the baby needs. Mm. And it is expensive. Yes, I heard I said 250,000 Naira expensive. for one transplant. Is for, for, for one transfusion. <laughs> one transfusion. <laughs> 250,000 yes, Naira. It's very expensive. You know, most times like this, because of the cost, especially in resource poor countries, you're not mm. aiming to you're not aiming to achieve to bring the platelets to that normal level of 150 to 450. Mm. You're only trying to avoid bleeding risk. So bring the platelets to a level above where the baby will be bleeding spontaneously. So mm. that's what you achieve because of what you are trying to avoid cost. So that as you're treating the cost of the whatever caused the platelet to be reduced the platelet on its own, the blood kicks, the, the bone marrows pick up and then produce those platelets. You know, one thing about, I don't want us to lose sight of this testimony, yes. is the fact that we have a child that had prematurity. Yes. And every, all the um, uh, features mm. of prematurity were in this child. Mm. The child had sepsis. Yes. The child had a problem with regulating temperature. Mm -hmm. The child had feeding problems. Mm -hmm. The child had um, um, jaundice. Mm. They had to do EBT on this child. Mm. And the child now also had um, 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 thrombocytopenia, which okay. was the low platelet. Okay. Now, one of the things that we need to understand is that because at that level of the platelets, tendency is for the body, the spontaneous bleeding to occur. Mm. The, blood, the, 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 the blood vessels in the brain yes. and every other part of the body are yes. not matured enough. They have a very high risk for bleeding to take place there. Wow. Remember, the platelet is low. Yes. So if there's bleeding in the brain, nothing would stop the bleeding because the platelets are low to clot it. And so you have bleeding into the brain, reduced perfusion to the brain, and eventually the child has tendency to develop cerebral palsy, which mm, passed off brain. Which was the word that had the gone one that came in the beginning. In the beginning. Mm. <laughs> mm. God so is that, awesome. That was, so if you see the trend mm. of everything, it that was, was one it was falling, leading, leading towards to cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy, mm. which had already been pre mm. in the beginning. Glory mm. to God. Glory to God. This is God. Glory this is, to God. Glory to God. You cannot Glory explain it in any other way mm. but that God had mercy on mm. this woman. Mm. Mm. You know, you know, she talked about, you know, this recovery for me is very speedy, but I want oh, to know from a doctor's perspective, goodness. what do you have to say about her, the baby's recovery? Premature babies. Yes. Before you start take, taking them off or discharging them. Yes, yes. They must be able to like achieve some form of functionality, mm. some, both physiologic functions, neurologic functions. At least somehow, baby is able to like eat, tolerate the foods. Baby is able to like uh, respire on its own. Baby is able to regulate temperature. Mm. But this was like within, see, even in as much as she had been buying platelets yes. for a long period of time, yes. the baby 
as at the time that the father went to the hospital, mm. baby was already bleeding into the skin, mm. meaning mm. that the platelets mm. did not work. Mm. But when the word came, mm. when the word came, mm. when the word accelerated came, the ah, from, the from 82, 000, from 82 to the time that Hallelujah. the baby was discharged, it was just Hallelujah. God. Can we just talk about the precision of the, the word? The word is amazing. Both the one that came prior and the second time it's around. Amazing. You know, she said she had been crying by the nursery and by the incubator. And the man of God said, God says he sees your tears. There is a woman who has had a baby and God sees your tears. And the exact, exact word, exact word, exact, exact, word. Word. exact, oh. exact word, exact mm. timing. Mean exact situation. Mm. Exact timing, ah, exact situation. Glory to God. And glory exact to God. And exact recovery. <laughs> glory to God. What God cannot do Truly does, does, not not exist. Exist. Truly does not does exist. Does not exist. Does not exist. Mind blowing wonders we're seeing you. day to day on NSPPD. SPD. My goodness. What an awesome time we've had today. Can you say something to our audience before we go? Also, honestly, today's testimony, lineup of testimonies mm. have been truly amazing. Hallelujah. These are the kind of things that we need to noise these things abroad. Mm. We don't just need to keep them to ourselves. Mm. That's why we mm. keep mm. telling our viewers, share, share. share. Click on the share button mm. so that more and more people will get to know there is mm. a fire altar that is burning here in this place. You know, these are not just mere words. It is reality. It is fact. What he cannot do in fact does not exist. He continues to turn and overturn all manners of negativities on the altar of fire daily. You know, having seen and heard the testimonies of today, there's nothing more to add than to say that what God cannot do does not exist. God continues to overturn and overturn on NSPPD daily. That is why you cannot afford to miss NSPPD. We saw a testimony, our last testifier, a word went forth even before the condition came. You know, the word had already gone forth. And while she was still on the altar, another word came forth and God overturned the situation. That is why you cannot afford to be there today and not be there tomorrow. Someone needs to take responsibility for his or her destiny. You need to take responsibility for the destinies that have been entrusted into your hands and take that decision to be consistent on the altar of fire. NSPPD continues Monday 7 a.m. Nigerian time and it will be on all the way through till Friday. You cannot afford to miss this and the strange acts of God will be back Saturday morning 7 a.m. Nigerian time. I mean, have you been blessed today? I'm sure you have been. Endeavor to click on the share button. The world needs to know that God is healing COVID. He's healing, you know, multiple organ failures. Organ failures. He's reviving sepsis. dead babies. Dead Let babies. the world know. Let the world know. Dr. Kelechi, thank you so, thank you much. so much. Always, always a pleasure it's having been an you here. Time. Yes, it's been we an look forward time. to having you again and again and again. Thank, thank you, you so much. And to our amazing viewers, thank you for watching till next time remember that what god cannot do does, does not, not exist, exist.